Greetings, lovely viewers. Welcome to Mystery Quest, where we embark on a journey through the annals of time to unravel the mysteries of the ancient world. Today, we set our sights on the mesmerizing realm of ancient Egypt, a civilization that stood as a beacon of enlightenment for close to three millennia. With each inscription, artifact, and monumental structure, we peel back the layers of time to reveal the secrets that have captivated historians and archaeologists alike. So sit back, dear viewers, as we embark on an extraordinary expedition into the heart of ancient Egypt. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more intriguing adventures in unraveling the enigma of ancient Egypt, from pre-dynastic pharaohs to Alexander's conquest. For close to three millennia, from its consolidation circa 3100 BC to its eventual annexation by Alexander the Great in 332 BC, ancient Egypt stood as the unrivaled pinnacle of civilization across the Mediterranean expanse. Its saga, from the monumental pyramids of the Old Kingdom to the conquests of the New Kingdom, has captivated archaeologists and historians alike, giving rise to the distinct field of Egyptology. Unveiling this ancient realm relies heavily on deciphering the inscriptions, adorning recovered monuments and artifacts, offering a glimpse into a culture distinguished by the splendor of its art, the ingenuity of its architecture, and the profundity of its religious practices. The Dawn of Civilization, Pre-Dynastic Period, C.H.E., 5000-3100, the Pre-Dynastic Period, spanning over 2,000 years, remains shrouded in mystery, with scant written records or artifacts to illuminate its evolution. In the crucible of northeastern Africa, Neolithic communities transitioned from hunting to agriculture, laying the groundwork for subsequent advancements in Egyptian arts, technology, governance, and spirituality. Marked notably by a profound reverence for the deceased of an afterlife. Around 3400 BC, the stage was set with the emergence of two distinct kingdoms flanking the Fertile Crescent. The Red Land, to the north, nestled within the Nile River Delta and stretched along the Nile, while the White Land, to the south, extended from Atfi to Gebel es Silsila. It was King Scorpion who, circa 3200 BC, initiated the first forays to unite the disparate realms. A century later, King Menes would achieve this unity cementing his legacy as the inaugural ruler of the First Dynasty. Early Dynastic Egypt, from founding to Pyramid Zenith. In circa 3100-2686 BC years, the archaic period of ancient Egypt witnessed the genesis of its societal pillars, with King Menes establishing the seminal capital of White Walls, later renowned as Memphis. Here, at the apex of the Nile River Delta, Egyptian civilization burgeoned, laying the groundwork for the illustrious Old Kingdom era. Central to this period was the evolution of kingship ideology, wherein the monarch assumed a divine stature, often equated with the mighty god Horus. Additionally, the archaic period marked the advent of hieroglyphic writing, a pivotal development in Egyptian culture. Throughout this epoch, akin to subsequent eras, the majority of Egyptians led agrarian lives in rural hamlets, with agriculture predominantly centered on wheat and barley, serving as the backbone of the economy. The annual inundation of the Nile River furnished vital irrigation and nutrients, facilitating bountiful harvests crucial for sustenance. Old Kingdom, the epic of pyramid construction, Sir Tel, 26.8.81 B.C. 2, the Old Kingdom dawned with the ascent of the Third Dynasty of Pharaohs, Around 2630 BC, King Djoser of the Third Dynasty commissioned Imhotep, an esteemed architect, priest, and healer, to conceive a funerary edifice. The result was the Step Pyramid at Saqqara, a pioneering feat in stone construction, situated near Memphis. Subsequently, Egyptian ingenuity reached its pinnacle with the erection of the Great Pyramid at Giza, adorning the outskirts of Cairo. Constructed for Khufu, also known as Cheops, who reigned from 2589 to 2566 BC. This marvel earned a place among the seven wonders of the ancient world, according to classical historians. Herodotus, the ancient Greek historian, 
estimated that its construction required the toil of 100,000 laborers over two decades. Furthermore, Giza witnessed the construction of two more pyramids for Khufu's successors, Khafra, 225-5832 BCD, and Menkora, 2532-25803 BC, it's During the 3rd and 4th dynasties, Egypt flourished in a golden age marked by tranquility and prosperity. The pharaohs wielded undisputed authority, ensuring a stable governance structure. External threats remained negligible, with victorious military expeditions in regions like Nubia and Libya bolstering Egypt's economic prowess. However, as the 5th and 6th dynasties unfolded, the royal treasury faced depletion, partly attributable to the exorbitant costs of pyramid construction. Concurrently, the burgeoning influence of the nobility and the priesthood, centered around the solar deity ra Ara, eroded the monarch's absolute power. With the demise of King Pipidikand of the 6th dynasty, who ruled for an astonishing 94 years, the old kingdom succumbed to a tumultuous end. The Rise from Chaos, First Egypt's Intermediate Period, Sitzkoi 21881, 2055 B.C. Asi. Following the collapse of the Old Kingdom, Egypt plunged into turmoil marked by the rapid ascension and fall of rulers from the 7th and 8th dynasties. By approximately 2060 B.C. Seoul, the once central authority crumbled, giving way to civil strife among regional governors, exacerbated by Bedouin incursions, famine, and disease. Amidst the chaos, two distinct kingdoms emerged. One, a lineage of 17 rulers based in Heracleopolis, governing Middle Egypt between Memphis and Thebes, dynasties 9 and 10, and the other, a rival family from Thebes challenging the Heracleopolitan dominance. It wasn't until around 2055 BC that a Theban prince, Mentehotep, rose to power toppling Heracleopolis and reuniting Egypt under the banner of the 11th dynasty, effectively terminating the first intermediate period. Rebirth and Expansion Middle Kingdom, 12th Dynasty, Sidi Dei, 2055, 1786, B.C. Gabauri. With the demise of the 11th dynasty and the assassination of its last ruler, Mentuhotep Futhufre, the throne passed to his vizier, Amenemhet I, who established the 12th dynasty. This new era witnessed the establishment of a fresh capital at Itoi, south of Memphis, while Thebes retained its significance as a religious center. During the Middle Kingdom, Egypt experienced a resurgence akin to the Old Kingdom's glory days. The 12th dynasty monarchs ensured dynastic stability by appointing each successor as co-regent, starting with Amenemhet I. Embarking on an assertive foreign policy, Egypt expanded into Nubia, thwarted Bedouin incursions, and forged diplomatic and trade ties with neighboring regions. Under Amenemhet III's reign, Egypt reached its zenith, marked by prosperous trade and monumental building projects. However, the decline commenced with Amenemhet IV and culminated with Queen Sobek Neferu, the first confirmed female ruler of Egypt and the last monarch of the 12th dynasty. An era of fragmentation, Second Egypt's Intermediate Period, c. 1786-1567 B.C. Tiru. The onset of the 13th dynasty signaled another period of instability, characterized by a revolving door of rulers unable to consolidate power. Egypt splintered into various spheres of influence, with Thebes emerging as the seat of government, while a rival dynasty, the 14th, flourished in Soyuz. Around 1650, BCU, the Hyksos, a foreign dynasty, capitalized on Egypt's disarray, seizing control. Despite adopting Egyptian customs, they ruled alongside the native Theban dynasty, Svantinth, who maintained control over the south. Tensions mounted, leading to conflict, and culminated in Theban forces expelling the Hyksos around 570 BCE Tsui, marking the end of the Second Intermediate Period. The flourishing era of Egypt's new kingdom, Sika 1567-1085 BC. Amos Thirst, ascending as the inaugural ruler of the 18th dynasty, heralded a reunification era for Egypt. Across the expanse of the 18th dynasty, Egypt's dominion extended once more into Nubia, while military expeditions ventured into Palestine, encountering the Mitannians and Hittites. This epoch birthed the world's premier empire, 
spanning from Nubia to the Euphrates River in Asia. Noteworthy amidst the roster of potent monarchs were figures like Amenhotep I, 1546 to 1526 BC, Thutmose the 1525 1512 BC, and Amenhotep III, 147 to 1379 BC. Yet the New Kingdom saga was equally shaped by the indomitable influence of royal women, epitomized by Queen Hatshepsut. 1503-1482 B.C. Na, who initially served as regent for her stepson, Thutmose III, before ascending to full pharaonic authority. In a contentious turn, Amenhotep IV, 1379-362 B.C. of the latter 18th dynasty, instigated a religious upheaval. He dismantled the priesthood dedicated to Amon-Re, opting for exclusive veneration of Aton, a sun god, assuming the name Akhenaton, meaning servant of the Aton, he erected a new capital named Akhenaton in Middle Egypt, later known as Amarna. Upon Akhenaton's demise, Thebes reclaimed its status as the capital, and Egypt reverted to its polytheistic roots. The subsequent epochs, the 19th and 20th dynasties, renowned as the Ramside era after the lineage of kings bearing the name Ramses, witnessed a resurgence of the faltering Egyptian empire and a renaissance of architectural marvels featuring grand temples and cities. According to biblical accounts, the epoch of Ramses II, 1304, 1237 B.C.C., potentially coincided with the exodus of Moses and the Israelites from Egypt. With the exception of Akhenaton, the rulers of the New Kingdom found their final repose in elaborate rock-cut tombs nestled in the Valley of the Kings on the Nile's western banks opposite Thebes. While many of these tombs fell victim to plunder and ruin, the tomb and treasures of Tutankhamun, Sedai, 1361-1352 BC, stood as a remarkable exception, unearthed virtually intact in 1922. Likewise, the majestic mortuary temple of Ramses III, Suri 1187-1156 BC, the eminent monarch of the 20th dynasty, remained remarkably preserved underscoring Egypt's enduring prosperity during his reign. Subsequent rulers faced mounting challenges, witnessing the loss of Egyptian territories in Palestine and Syria, invasions by foreign powers such as the Libyans, and a gradual erosion of the nation's wealth. The evolution of Egypt, from the Third Intermediate Period to Alexander's Conquest, c. 1085-332 B.C., during the Third and Intermediate Period, spanning roughly 1085 to 664 BC, Egypt underwent significant transformations across its political, societal, and cultural landscapes. This era witnessed the decline of centralized authority under the 21st dynasty, paving the way for the resurgence of local governance. Concurrently, foreign influences, particularly from Libya and Nubia, exerted considerable power, leaving a profound imprint on Egypt's societal fabric. Around 945 BC, the commencement of the 22nd dynasty marked a notable shift with King Sheshonk, a descendant of Libyan invaders who had settled in Egypt, ascending to power. During this period, numerous local rulers operated with virtual autonomy and the historical documentation of dynasties 23-24 remains scant. In the 8th century BC, Hau'u, Nubian pharaohs initiated their own dynasty, the 25th, with figures like Shabako from the Kingdom of Kush. Under Kushida reign, Egypt found itself in conflict with the burgeoning Assyrian Empire. In 671, B.C. Kai, Esarhaddon, the Assyrian ruler, ousted the Kushite king Taharqa from Memphis, decimating the city in the process. Subsequently, Esarhaddon appointed local governors and officials loyal to Assyria, including Necho of Sias, who briefly reigned as the inaugural king of the 26th dynasty before facing resistance from the Kushite leader, Tenuataman. From the last period of Alexander's conquests, c. 664-332 BCU. The subsequent era, spanning roughly from 664 to 32 BC, witnessed a continuum of upheaval and transformation in Egypt's political landscape. Commencing with Semeticus, the Site dynasty ruled over a reunified Egypt for a brief period of less than two centuries. However, in 525 BCEs, Cambyses of Persia dealt a decisive blow by defeating Semeticus III at the Battle of Pelusium, incorporating Egypt into the vast Persian Empire. 
Persian dominion over Egypt saw a blend of foreign governance with native traditions. Rulers like Darius upheld Egypt's religious practices and invested in temple construction and restoration, mirroring the approaches of indigenous monarchs. Nevertheless, the oppressive rule of Xerxes fueled unrest and uprisings, culminating in a successful rebellion in 404 BC to war. Ushering in a brief period of Egyptian autonomy under native rulers from dynasties 2830. In the mid 4th century BC, the Persians launched another assault on Egypt, reasserting their control under Ataxerxes III in 343 BC. However, this dominance was short lived, as in 332 BC. Alexander the Great of Macedonia triumphed over the Persian forces, annexing Egypt into his burgeoning empire. Following Alexander's demise, Egypt experienced an era of Macedonian rule, with Ptolemy, one of Alexander's generals, and his successors governing the land. This era culminated with the iconic Cleopatra VII, who in 31 BC surrendered Egypt to Octavian, later Augustus of Rome, marking the onset of Roman hegemony that endured for six centuries. During Roman rule, Christianity became the official religion, reshaping Egypt's religious landscape. The eventual Arab conquest of Egypt in the 7th century AD and the subsequent adoption of Islam signified the culmination of Egypt's transformation from its ancient roots to its modern identity, marking the end of an era that had endured for millennia.